beginning of their season. They have the debut of their new head coach, Carl Franks, and the debut of a new offense that they are electing to tell the world about. They're calling it Airborne. Well, Airborne is right. They're going to have four, sometimes five wide receivers going out, spearheaded by maybe one of the finest duos in the nation in terms of pairs of wide receivers, and that's Scotty Montgomery, Richmond Flowers. Scott, these guys just don't stay covered for very long. East Carolina, meantime, is coming. Well, the excitement here is the Pirates take the field. East Carolina hosting Duke today here in Greenville, North Carolina. As we said, the seventh meeting between these two teams, but the first time ever here in Greenville. Alongside Trevor Maddich, I am Scott Graham. The third man of our broadcast team is Lewis Johnson. Lewis, what do you got for us? Well, guy Steve Logan remembers the first time he saw David Garrard. He was at a high school football camp, and Garrard was reportedly at 270 pounds. Well, when Logan saw that big body, he said, well, that kid must be a lineman. But he walked up to him and asked him, hey, what's your position? And Garrard replied, I'm a quarterback. He said, oh, yeah? Well, flipped him a ball and said, prove yourself. And that he did. The story goes, Garrard threw that football over the elementary school, which was across the street. And over the last two years, we have seen Garrard prove himself to be just that, a good quarterback. Now, on a more personal note, in 1994, David lost his mother, Shirley, to breast cancer. And the oldest brother, Anthony, decided to put his life on hold, make sure that the other siblings made their way through high school and on into college. And now at age 29, Anthony is a freshman here at East Carolina. He's too old to play college football, but today he sits in the stands and watches his younger brother play ball, living his college football dream through his brother. Well, truly an inspirational story. Carl Franks in his first season, making his debut today as the Duke head coach. After many years as an assistant to Steve Spurrier, it's Spurrier's offense that he has installed here at Duke. Meantime, on the other side of the field, you've got Steve Logan. A long tenure here at East Carolina of the eight seasons. Make that eighth season that he's going into. He has had four winning seasons, including bouncing back with a 6-5 and five campaign last year. A lot of excitement on game day here in Greenville. The ECU Pirates try to go to 2-0 on the year after a big victory last week against West Virginia. Duke has won the toss and elected to receive. There is Kevin Miller, who made his debut last week, the freshman kicker, who was a scholarship golfer for East Carolina, getting an opportunity to come out and kick now. Meantime, back deep now for the Duke Blue Devils. Ben Erdeljack, and he is back there along with Richmond Flowers. Check that, that's Scotty Montgomery. Ready to get underway. Miller into the kick, and here we go, it's a good one. Montgomery's going to have to take a knee five yards deep in the end zone as the Blue Devils will start it out first and ten at their own 20-yard line. An absolutely sterling day for football here in North Carolina with game time temperatures in the low 80s, low humidity, and a light breeze throughout Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The man to lead the Duke Blue Devils is junior quarterback Spencer Romai. You can see the numbers. Started the five. This should be a good one. More college football Saturday, of course, coming up later. But right now, it's the Greenville. Well, thank you, Kevin. And thanks for filling in for us during a power outage that we had here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. We apologize for the technical difficulties, but welcome you back to Duke in East Carolina. Right now, 10.55 left to go here in the first quarter. And we are still scoreless, but we have seen offensive movement from the Duke Blue Devils. They've got a third and short now at their own 36. Trying for first down yardage, and close to it is Epperson. It's going to depend on the spot of the football. For the Duke Blue Devils, it is an experienced veteran core in the offensive line, including Troy Andrew, an 11-game starter at center for them last year. Meantime, in terms of the backs and receivers, Epperson, Pierce, Dupree, Montgomery, Richmond, Flowers, three 100-yard games last year for the Duke Blue Devils. By the spot of the football, Duke does have another first down. 
their fourth first down here in the first quarter. They were moving well into East Carolina territory, but a pickoff by Forrest Foster of that man Spencer Romine. Got the ball back to East Carolina. The Pirates then fumbled it back on their first play. Three wide receiver set this time for Romine. He's had time throughout the first quarter to throw. Now keeping it alive. He'll be taken down behind the line by Pernell Griffin back at the 32-yard line. East Carolina Pirate defense promising to be more aggressive this year. Three men across the front, including Bayo Amadou, originally a linebacker, but played 10 games at the nose guard spot last year. Watch Jeff Carr, first team Conference USA last year, second team the year before. And Forrest Foster, who already has cemented himself as a leader with a pickoff here in the first quarter. Second down from the 33. Romine has Montgomery again, and he'll make it out to the 34-yard line, a pickup of just about two yards. We told you that there's already been a couple of turnovers in this one here in the first quarter. First, it was Romine trying to go deep. And Foster makes a great break on this ball, picks it off. Romine just delayed the throw a little bit, and Foster made a great individual athletic play. We thought there that East Carolina was going to take over. However, East Carolina came back, and on the quick out pass, the fumble for Marcellus Harris gave it back to the Blue Devils. And they have it right back again, and this airborne offense has shown up so far, Scott, as advertised. Receivers running every which direction, catching those footballs. Trying to make it a perfect four for four in third down conversions. Romine with time, the open receiver on the first down for Montgomery, down at the East Carolina 45-yard line. Now he... He has had time to throw, Trevor. He has had time to throw. And this time he shows great poise. Remind, look at him step up into the pocket, step up, step up, always eyes downfield. And Montgomery, the experienced receiver, knows that this is a zone. And as he comes across on that crossing route, he sat down just a little bit in that gap. Choked down his speed. Excellent play. For the second time now, the Blue Devils in East Carolina territory on first down from the Pirate 45. More signs of blitz, and this time the blitz is going to work. Pernell Griffin got into the backfield and throws Dwayne Epperson for a loss. Let's take a look at number 47. Griffin, he's their middle linebacker. Here he's going to come right here. He's going to come in and get penetration and make this tackle right in the backfield. This is that attacking style that defensive coordinator Tim Rose has brought in, and we can expect to see this all game. East Carolina will be attacking the line of scrimmage. Second down now, and 13 yards to go for Romine. Once again, the spread set. Hit as he throws, and it's thrown away. A lot of pressure coming from the outside, and Jeff Carr was there along with Devon Claybrooks to provide the hit. Romine tried to step up and got hit two different ways back there. Well, you can't keep coming for so long and not get there. This time, Carr and Claybrooks off the right or left side of your screen. Offensive right side, and Carr just lands directly on top of Romine. And that's a, the athlete that Carr is. He had the athletic ability to get in there to make the sack, but body control on the way down to land on Romine. He talked this week about making big plays. Last week, you see 12 tackles in a sack. Third down, they've got to get it to the 35-yard line. A delay blitz. Looking for the open receiver, and it is knocked away. Downfield, they were going for Ben Erdelak. And once again, Forrest Foster comes up big in coverage down the right sideline. You know, I'm impressed with Romine on that series. He got drilled, and yet still on that play with the blitz coming, and he could see it because it came to his right in his face. He found the man with one-on-one -on -one coverage. Didn't make the play, but Franks has got to be happy with his young quarterback on that series. Brian Morton is going to punt it away to Marcellus Harris, standing back at his own 10-yard line. High kick. Harris calls for the fair catch and will make it at the 12-yard line. A 36-yard punt with no return. And East Carolina will get its first opportunity to come back now after running just one play, scoreless in the first. 
2000 Buick LeSabre by Buick, re-engineered to be safer than ever. The beautiful campus of East Carolina University here in Greenville, North Carolina. Today, a large crowd on hand looking to paint it purple. That's what they say around here as East Carolina takes on Duke. And the Pirates going to get what is ostensibly their first offensive opportunity to try to put something together after just one possession and a fumble of the football. David Garrard is the quarterback for this team in his sophomore season. He set 16 different records for the Pirates last year as a freshman. East Carolina buried back at their own 12-yard line. They talked this week about using the pass a lot more than they did last week against West Virginia. Gerard will run the option. Fumbles the football and gets back on top of it. Just outside the 12, maybe a gain of a half yard. Let's take a look at the offense for the East Carolina Pirates. The offensive front anchored down by left tackle Samayan Jones. He started 9 of 11 games at right tackle last year. He moves over this season. Lamont Chappell is the go-to guy at wide receiver, although last week against West Virginia, he was turned off without a reception. Keep an eye on Jamie Wilson. 183 yards in the victory last week. Motion now on the line, and flags are flying. Dead ball. Full start. On the offense. Five yards. Second down. So the false start is going to back East Carolina up. Now with the football inside their own eight-yard line. Not much has happened offensively for the Pirates over the course of their first couple of plays. We're five minutes into this game now. They've already had two fumbles and a penalty. Two fumbles on two plays. Second down. Garage in trouble again and going to get ripped down from behind. The linebacker blitz of Kevin Lewis drops him down inside the three-yard line. Let's take a look at the Duke defensive unit. They go out of a 3-4 as well. Chris Combs, preseason candidate for the Outland Trophy, anchoring down the three-man defensive front for the Blue Devils. Todd Delamalora, if it's a recognizable name, of course it is. His dad was the All-America at Michigan State and the All-Pro for the Bills. And Quentin Holly making his first ever start in place of the suspended Lamar Grant. A lot of pressure on the sophomore out on the corner today. So far, not much has gone right for the Pirates. And a quick kick by Gerard. He barely got it away. You don't see that often. It's going to roll and be down at the East Carolina 27-yard line. Lots of surprises here early after a 23-yard punt. The Blue Devils have it when we come back. Squirrel is here in the first quarter at East Carolina. You know that... We had some technical difficulties. Apparently, it was a power outage, and Lewis Johnson, our Columbo on the scene, has found out why. Right, Lewis? Hey, that's right. Got my coat on, guy. You know, I talked with stadium officials just a few moments ago, and they said that, oddly enough, the power outage was just on the south side on the lower levels. Well, that's exactly where our Fox Sports Net trucks are. They've also told me that they have a backup transformer that has kicked in. That should carry us through the game. Now, if that goes down, they have another backup transformer, so we're hoping to be okay, Scott. Well, that would be the hope. On a gorgeous day like this one where the lights don't come into play, you wouldn't have noticed it, but may have, had we been playing a night game. Duke, a tremendous advantage in offensive plays run, and now starting out inside the 30, Montgomery can't come up with it. A diving attempt just off his fingertips as Eric Hines provided the coverage in the end zone. And Scott, Eric Hines, backup cornerback. They've got a lot of backups in on this defense. It's like Coach Steve Logan of East Carolina has wholesale replaced as many guys on that defense as he could. Maybe he's trying to send a message out there. Both cornerbacks are new. The entire defensive line has been rotated here in the first quarter. This is an interesting move by Steve Logan. Second down and 10. The wide receiver in motion is Richmond Flowers. The give is to B.J. Hill, and he'll get it down just outside the 25-yard line. Third down coming up. Well, tomorrow it is the debut 
of NFL This Morning. 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. Join Chris Myers, Jackie Slater, and Marv Levy. Their special guest will be Chris Spielman. That's the NFL This Morning. Tomorrow, Spielman, as you can see, announcing his retirement earlier this summer. On third down, some play action for Romine. Got the open receiver. Can he get to the first down marker? He does. A dive forward for Terrence Dupree. And a Duke first down as the senior comes up with a tough catch and tougher yardage after the catch. Well, there's Terrence Dupree, tight end, lines up on the right of the screen and just makes a great athletic move here. Now, this is, he's wide open. He should catch it. But look, he's got one, two ECU defenders dragging them forward to the first down. As Chris Satterfield and John Williamson along for the ride on the back of Terrence Dupree. Now a first down for the Blue Devils just outside the 16. With Montgomery in motion, Hill turns it upfield and dives down inside the 15-yard line and inside the 14, a pickup of a couple on first down. Scott, the thing I want you to look at here is the complete difference in offensive look this time. Look, they've got a tight end here, a tight end here. That means they're in a double tight end set here rather than the wide open 3-4 wide receiver set that they opened the game with. They're giving East Carolina's defense a lot to look at early in the first quarter. East Carolina's defensive unit was hoping to keep Duke guessing. Right now it's the other way around. Single coverage for Montgomery up top. Romine's looking the other way, and the ball falls incomplete off the hands of true freshman tight end Benjamin Watson. You talked about East Carolina's defense wanting to keep Duke off balance. That's what this defense is designed to do. Coordinator Tim Rose told us that he wants to dictate to the offense and attack the line of scrimmage every way he can. And Duke so far has picked everything up by keeping a lot of blockers in to pick up the blitz. So there have not been unblocked blitzers of East Carolina coming into that backfield. There is Tim Rose, the new defensive coordinator, says he wants his defense proactive, not reactive. On third down. The throw and a near pickoff once again out on the outside for Forrest Foster. He went after it, and had he made that catch, he could have traveled a long way. Well, this time they only brought three people. They dropped eight back into coverage, and Foster has just been incredible. Look at the right top corner of your screen, number 37. Look at him read the quarterback's eyes, read the quarterback's eyes, and then step up. This is a Romine mistake. He just stared right at Flowers the whole time, and Foster is just too experienced to let him get away with that. So now it'll be senior Sims Lenhart on to attempt the field goal. From this range last year, he was two for two, just shy of 32 yards away, and he'll pump it through for the first quarter lead for the Blue Devils. So far, it has been all Duke here in the first quarter. The Blue Devils lead it by three. Three nothing Duke here in the first quarter. Carl Franks making his Duke head coaching debut today says you gotta be ready for anything. The reason you're in coaching is to have an opportunity to coach in the games. So we've been preparing our team for all kinds of situations and hopefully I've learned some things that have happened in some of the games that we watched on TV last week to try to prepare your team for. But now it's time to, to get rolling and, and get things going. And our team is anxious to play. We're, we're tired of hitting each other. And assistant coaches and myself, we're tired of watching our team hit, hit each other. So it's time to go play somebody else. Well, this is Duke's opener. They had their bye week in the opening week of the season. East Carolina already has a game under its belt. And Carl Franks was concerned about his team looking like it was well coached early. And so far, they look like they've been playing in mid-season form. Saw the Buick scoring drive. Seven plays results in the field goal. Now Lenhardt has it teed up. And that will be Stokes from his own five-yard line. Got a wall in front of him. Found his way to open spaces, and there he goes, out across the 40-yard line. Stokes with a return out to the 41, and some good field position now for the Pirates. We'll take a look as the hole opens up. Stokes number 14. 
his forte is not his speed, it's his ability to stop and start. Now watch him stop, start, stop, start, go side to side. He scored nine touchdowns on punt and kickoff returns as a junior college player last year, and, and the tackle being made by the kicker. You saw Jamie Wilson, the fullback, with a big block to free him up for some more, and now it's Wilson in the open spaces himself. Inside the 35-yard line and down at the Duke 31. 28 yards on the carry. Whistles blowing on the play, a flag down on the play. Now take a look, he goes right through the left side and this is just zone blocking. The offensive line steps to an area and picks up. Holding on the offense, there's the run, 10 yards, start of the foul, repeat first down. The he offensive line, they pick up whoever shows up there and Jamie Wilson's big run there is gonna be negated because of holding, but the strategy there, Scott, was that the blitzing, stunting front of Duke, to pick it up, they have the offensive line take a step, and then whoever's in front of them, when they go forward, that's who they block. As we look at Burns down, Burns is a big part of this offense, Scott, and they, they don't want to lose him. He runs a 4-6-40, and he, they want to stretch the field on passing games with him running up the middle. Now, college football Saturday continues here on Fox Sports Net. Coming up next, after this game between Duke and East Carolina, the in-state rivalry between Iowa and Iowa State. Then later on at 10.15 Eastern Time, Pac-10 action between Washington State and Stanford. Check your local listings. Now right now, Steve Logan looking on as his team has had little go right. A big run negated by a holding call. They're backed up to their own 32. Gerard hit as he throws, got the open receiver, and Chapel is out across the 50-yard line. Big throw and catch, and they finally got it to the go-to guy, Lamont Chapel as Gerard had the time to throw and just got it off before he got hit. Remember earlier when Duke had Richmond Flowers sit between the zone. This is Chapel doing the very same thing. Duke brought everybody up to a press look, dropped them off into a zone, and Chapel read that immediately, sat right between the defenders, made that catch wide open. An average of better than 16 yards a catch last season. They are going to measure for the first down. Strategy here, Scott. Here's what's happening. East Carolina has the most unusual mix of offense I've ever seen in my life. They run a West Coast passing offense like the San Francisco 49ers, but they run an option-style running offense. I've never seen that before, and that puts tremendous pressure on the defense because the way you attack the West Coast passing offense is blitz it. The way you, but if you blitz an option running offense, you might give up big plays on the run. So East Carolina is going to try to exploit blitzes by that front seven. Pirates with their first first down are now in Duke territory inside the 49-yard line. Gerard looks to check off at the line, and he's running the option. Inside the 45-yard line, down around his ankles, helping to bring him down was Kendrell Knight after a pickup of nearly four yards on first down. Well, there's that option, and that's difficult for the defense to practice when they've got to practice against an option and a West Coast. Now, Gerard last week had an, inc an incredible day on the ground. And again, the thing I want you to look at here is when he runs the ball, look how hard it is for people to drag him off of his feet. 6'3", 235, built a lot more like a fullback and with a running back mentality. Play fake on second down. And Gerard, last minute throw, got his man. Inside the 20-yard line and down to the 19 is Arnie Powell. A 26-yard pickup and a first down for the Pirates. And patience by that young quarterback. This is where he's really improved. Take a look at number 93. Come in, that's Combs, the all-ACC candidate this year, defensive lineman. Look at his patience as he looks down the field to find Powell. Last year, as a redshirt freshman, Gerard looked for one receiver only. And when the, if that wasn't there, he would just throw the ball away. So Powell gets them down to the 19-yard line. The man in motion is Floyd, the tight end. And now Wilson. Dragged down from behind. Tackle made down low on the defensive line by Chris Combs after a short pickup. And this shows the Duke defensive strategy. How are they going to stop this? 
The way that Combs and this defense is going to... Now watch him come, attack the line of scrimmage. The blitz here is what they want to do. Even though that makes them exposed to the option, they feel that the strength of their team is that front seven, and they want to use them aggressively. Second and eight from just outside the 17. Gerard with one-on-one -on -one coverage, finds another first down into the hands of DeLeo Dodd, and he is inside the Duke 10-yard line all the way down to the seventh. And this is why they want to blitz with that front seven, Scott, because the strength is the blitzers, the weakness is at the corner. Here, Hamilton gives Dodd a lot of space because with Lamar Grant suspended from the team, they don't have the one-on-one -on -one coverage corners that they want. That's another reason why Duke is trying to blitz to keep the quarterback from having time. Gerard beginning to find the range. Now first down and goal. Here's Wilson. He'll get it inside the five-yard line for a pickup of a couple. Now the offensive coordinator for this East Carolina Pirates team, Doug Martin, he is calling the plays. For the eye in the sky, there he is. Yeah, we got to get this guy and move your head that direction. So there you go. See, I'll tell you something. He's watching Fox. He sees what's going on. Second down from the five-yard line for the Pirates. Gerard with the option, trying to cut back. And look how tough he is to bring down after a pickup of about a yard, maybe more down to the four-yard line. You can only run this style offense if you've got a quarterback who can throw and who can run, and you don't mind getting hit. Most quarterbacks that have as big an arm as Gerard, the offensive coordinator would say, look, nobody ever touches him. But this guy is so big and so powerful that they'll put him in harm's way. Well, that's going to do it for the first quarter of play, but right now the Pirates of East Carolina are knocking on the door. It's Duke by three. Today's second quarter... Campus of East Carolina University here in Greenville, North Carolina. A gorgeous day today, perhaps in between visits from hurricanes. Last week, the area got drenched by Hurricane Dennis, but today you'd never know it. Gorgeous day outside, and as we begin the second quarter, the Duke Blue Devils with a 3-0 lead. Now, those first quarter statistics, look at the disparity in plays between the two teams, and yet Duke only comes away with three points. That's right, and, and that means that Duke has, or East Carolina has absorbed Duke's best shot in the first quarter, and they're about to take the lead. Just inside the five-yard line, third down and goal. They're standing here at East Carolina. Gerard to the middle. That is no a touchdown. Chapel, the juggling catch. Well, there's their go-to guy. He's making up for lost time, being shut out last week against West Virginia. Gerard finds his go-to guy, gets him involved in the game early. He's going to come in from the right of your screen, and number 45 on defense, Delon Valour, is just a linebacker. And so they bring Chapel into the middle to go one-on-one -on -one against an inside linebacker for that touchdown. The extra point for Kevin Miller is good. And after a first quarter dominated by Duke, on the first play of the second quarter, East Carolina takes the lead. Live coverage of the Panthers' weekly press conference, Mondays at noon on Fox Sports Net. East Carolina exploits the zone defense. You're going to see Chapel come in and get into the zone of number 45, DeLabalore, an interior linebacker. A wide receiver against a guy who's not used to covering in there. And look at the matchup that gets exploited for this touchdown. Great play calling. They read the zone as it came in and called that play accordingly. That's just, that's just an absolutely fabulous chess match move of Doug Martin, offensive coordinator. And happy, happy people there. Well, on Chapel, who, as we told you, was shut out last week, 
capping off the scoring drive of eight plays and 58 yards. A perfect drive for the quarterback. So now East Carolina kicks off to Duke. That'll be Montgomery once again. This time four yards deep with a juggle and a knee in the end zone. So once again, the strong leg of the freshman Kevin Miller in Montgomery can't do much with it as he tried to make the catch back in the end zone. Two kicks, two touchbacks thus far for East Carolina. Duke cuddling on the sidelines here. They tried this off the first play off the opening kickoff and got hit for a delay of game. So the huddle, as you can see, breaking pretty quickly. Spencer Romine, the junior from Coleman, Alabama. Working out of the shotgun formation. And on first down with pressure, Romine's got Montgomery. Look out. And Montgomery is all the way down to the East Carolina 35-yard line. A gain of 45 yards on first down. Well, this is Duke taking advantage of a, a personnel matchup as well. Number six, Travis Mazik is a converted wide receiver. And, and right here, there's nothing there. And Mazik right there is a converted wide receiver that Coach Carl Franks told us they were going to exploit or at least test to see if he could handle it at game tempo. And that time, Duke's personnel matchup won the day. From the 35-yard line on first down, Romine's got Flowers, and that's going to be good down to the 30-yard line for a five-yard pickup. Let's go to our College Football Saturday studio for an update with Kevin Frazier. Guys, great game between Penn State and Pitt. Time ticking away under 15 seconds ago. Pitt trying to tie the game. The field goal is blocked. Who did it? LeVar Arrington. Who else? Pitt loses by three. A scare averted by the Nittany Lions of Penn State, the number two team in the country against their longtime rival. Here at East Carolina University in Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, second down. And Hill is swarmed over in the backfield for a loss of a yard. Greenville, North Carolina is the site, the first ever visit from the Duke Blue Devils against their in-state rivals, East Carolina. Along with Trevor Maddich and Lewis Johnson, I'm Scott Graham. A first quarter dominated by Duke in everything but score. And now the Blue Devils try to come up with a key third down conversion from the East Carolina 31. Here comes the blitz. Picked up. Romine throws it away up over the head of his intended receiver. Was trying to find Scotty Montgomery downfield, but good coverage from the secondary. Eric Hines right there. It was good coverage and man-to-man -man coverage there because it was a blitz. Here's Flowers working against Foster, who has just eaten up Duke so far during this game. And it's good coverage out there man for man because EC or ECU blitzed them to force that kind of a play. Sims Lenhard has the kind of leg to hit a 49-yarder. That's what he's being called on to do. Got plenty of distance, and it is good. Lenhard banging it through, making this a one-point ball game. A career long of 54. This time he's good from five yards closer and gets his team within a point. After a win over the Big East, Steve Logan would love to pick up a win over the ACC, but he loves his conference. Well, I think Southern Miss, I think Tulane, I think that Houston, I think that East Carolina, and I think Memphis, Cincinnati, all those separate contingencies when we became a conference, I think all of them said the same thing. Oh, man, this is a conference we can go win right now. Well, guess what? I guess in three years there's been three separate champions. Nobody can dominate. And the point again is, if you investigate it a little bit, there's, it's really good football and we're killing each other in the conference, which that's what a good conference should do. Uh, it should be competitive within the conference, but when we step out of conference, whoever we play needs to bring their jock, a mouthpiece, and a chin strap because our boys don't show up. 
Lenhart, who just hit on a 49-yard field goal, kicks it away. Chappell's going to try it from three yards deep in the end zone. With a block and a move. Chappell is all the way out to the 40-yard line. He's a big play man, whether it's catching the ball or bringing it back on kicks returns. This is just great blocking. You can see Jamie Wilson, number 23, leading up. And take a look at Chapel's eyes as he sees the hole and turns straight up the field through that hole. That's just great blocking, but Chapel in his eyes being able to follow that block. Young man, as you can see, who last year averaged nearly 23 yards a return. First down for the 40-yard line for the Pirates. And now a replacement at quarterback as Richard Alston has come into the ball game, and he runs the option to the outside for a pickup of three. This is a redshirt freshman from Warrington, North Carolina, who provides instant excitement when he comes into the ball game. He'll get it for at least two series today. Rashawn Burns went down with an injury. What do you have, Lewis? Well, he was down here on the sideline complaining about being stood up and chop blocked from behind the right knee. The doctors have looked at it, said nothing is moving, which is a good sign. So he threw some protection on it, and he's gone back in the game, Steve. Alston, with time and a howitzer on, throws it behind his intended receiver. He was looking for Arnie Powell downfield. Alston is a guy that they want to get time in here. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. They want to get him experience. Coming up on Tuesday at 8, Hardcore Football. Ex-Green Bay Packer Robert Brooks is the guest. The NFL Comeback Player of the Year in 97. A first-team All-Pro in 95. Recently retired due to back problems. That's coming up on Hardcore Football, Tuesday night at 8. Seven seasons with the Packers and the man who patented the Lambeau Leap. Now Alston, in a lot of trouble, gets rid of it. And a flag goes down on the play. Looks like grounding will be called inside the 30-yard line, Trevor. I don't know grounding. I think it was just survival there, Scott. Well, they were coming hard for Alston. Intentional grounding on the offense. Lost it down. It's a spot of a fail. They were fourth down. Yeah, Kevin Lewis, number 27, a linebacker, draped all over him. 27, right here, has just got in there, and really, <laughs> he had a receiver down there. It's just that he had no chance of getting the ball anywhere near him. I, I don't know if I make that call on that play. This, I, I don't know that a young quarterback like Alston would intentionally ground. He was trying to make a play. Andrew Bays, the senior, as you can see, has the credentials to kick it a long way. Line drive kick. Hurdle Jack from his own 28. And out to the 35-yard line where Duke will take over on first down and 10. 45 yards on the kick, 7 on the return. And right now for East Carolina, they're trying to see what they can do about keeping away that Duke pressuring defense when in reality we expected to see it the other way around. Well, we did. East Carolina, we knew, was going to attack the line of scrimmage. Duke, though, has to attack the line of scrimmage with their defensive front because their cornerbacks can't cover man for man long enough. They're weak at corner. And so that's the offensive line getting instruction on how to pick up those blitzes. Can be as many as five receivers to choose from, depending upon protection now for Romai. The inside give is out to the 36-yard line, a pickup of a yard. Let's talk ACC, Lewis. Yeah, you know, it's been nearly impossible for this university to get teams from the ACC to come here and play. And let's just take a look at a graphic that shows you the ACC, ACC teams just in the state of North Carolina. Duke now making their first appearance. North Carolina State, out of 21 times, will make their first appearance November 20th. North Carolina never been here. Wake Forest. Only one trip to Greenville, so it's been really tough. Steve Logan's trying to correct that. Duke being here is the road in that direction. Romine looking across the middle found Erdeljack in East Carolina territory at the 49-yard line and a first down for the Blue Devils. The converted wide receiver, number six, Mazik, great athlete but new. 
and they will test him in the middle until he shows that he can stop those completions. So first down now for the Blue Devils inside the 49-yard line as the Duke offense continues to move the football, trailing by a point. That's Epperson. And he is ripped down by Pernell Griffin at the 46-yard line. Now the ACC does make its trip to Greenville here today, and as we said, not a whole lot of that has happened in the past. Duke makes the trip here today. NC State will be here later on this season. Wake Forest, the only ACC team from the state of North Carolina that has played here. And look at the disparity in games played against Carolina schools for the Pirates. Now they don't want to come here, though. I mean, this is a dangerous place to play. People don't know what a good football program East Carolina has because until now they haven't been on television nationally. On second down. Romine got an open receiver again, and Ertel Jack's going to have first down yardage inside the 31-yard line. This is great strategy on protection by Duke. They're keeping in six, seven guys. Look at these two running backs to help protect. They're picking up the blitz so they don't have to throw hot. That allows one-on-one -on -one receivers to take their time using moves to get open. That's what gave Ertel Jack his ability to get open there. But ordinarily... Teams that get blitzed throw hot. Duke is picking up the blitz, taking their time. Airborne attack indeed. Blitz coming on first down. Epperson straight up the middle and down to the 24-yard line for a pickup of six. Boy, Carr just gets tackled here. He gets wrapped up by Chris Nelson, I believe, and dragged to the ground. Look at number 84 for East Carolina. He's the man right there. Look at him come in here and get tackled inside by the left guard. Oh, that's Lynch. Look at 79. Okay. Lynch just grabs him and pulls him in. Sometimes the ref doesn't see. So now it is second down. Romine, the pressure coming, just got rid of it in time. Before he was knocked down on the play, Devon Claybrooks came on and hit him low just as he tried to deliver the football. Well, East Carolina is committed to that pressure. They're going to keep on coming. Take a look at the pursuit here now and the pressure. This time they're all blocked, but they're able to force that offense and the blockers back into the quarterback. It's going to be relentless today. This group is in condition, and they're very, very fast, which means, Scott, that if a blocker doesn't front him up properly, the Blitzers are going to be able to get penetration. Third down. They've got to get it just inside the 21-yard line. Pirate fans come to life with the play. Romine incomplete. Trying to get it down to Kyle Shanahan inside the five-yard line. Well, that time, number 79, McCleary. 91, Clay Brooks. Defensive ends did get that penetration and used their speed to force Romine to not be able to get the ball off. See, this is going to be big plays for the offense or big play for the defense on alternating situations. Scott, look for that because that's the nature when you're selling out. But if you're Carl Franks, nice to have that weapon. As Ledhart tries to make his third, this is a 42-yarder. Plenty of legs behind it. And the third field goal of the game for Sims Lenhart. With that, Duke retakes the lead. A two-point advantage for the Blue Devils here in Greenville. Coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, Kellen Winslow and I will have scores and highlights from across the country, including Michigan as they try to improve to 3-0. and All day long, the Wolverines on target against Rice. Highlights of the half, but right now, let's rejoin Scott Graham and Trevor Maddich in Greenville. Guys. Thanks, Kevin. 9-7 our score with Duke on top of East Carolina. Three sims Lenhart field goals have given the Blue Devils the lead. I like... Jamie Wilson is yet to get on track running the football. Now, Jamie Wilson, West Virginia killer last week, has two carries for four yards today. This is going to be Stokes fielding five yards deep in his end zone, and discretion proves to be the better part of Valor. He'll take it out of the 20-yard line. Another booming kick for Sims Lenhart. Now, Sunday at 9 on Fox Sports Net, Sammy Sosa goes one-on-one -on -one with Chris Myers on going deep. 
Sosa, of course, has a shot once again at a new home run record. He was one for four today with no home runs. But Sammy Sosa with 59. No player has ever hit 60 home runs twice in his career. The one for four today. No home runs yet in this series. Still with a four home run lead over Mark McGuire as we come down the stretch in Major League Baseball. Trying to get Wilson started. He'll take the hand out across the 22-yard line for a couple of yard pickup. Now Duke once again gets on the board on a Lenhart field goal, his third of the day, 21st of his career of 40 yards or more. Now the biggest compliment I can give a kicker is to say he's a football player. Lenhart rooms with Combs. They're also ACC defensive end. I mean, this guy, is a, he's a hard-headed kicker. On second down, Gerard got the open receiver, and that'll be good for first down yardage to Arnie Pell as he gets it out to the 31-yard line. This is what East Carolina is going to have to do to be able to move the ball against Duke and their strategy. Duke wants to take away the running game. They've done that by putting eight men up on the line of scrimmage. They want to force Gerard to beat them as a drop back passer. And that's what Duke is doing successfully so far. Well, you can already see a change in the routes now that Gerard has had to choose from. He'll run option this time. And that's Wilson trying to pick up the block from Marcellus Harris, but not a lot of room to run. Watch number 27, Kevin Lewis. Right here, stuff his blocker and hold the point of attack. Now watch what he does. He keeps his right arm free, right arm free, and he forces Wilson to have to juke back and forth to allow time for the cavalry to get there. Lewis with about a 45-yard pound advantage on Marcellus Harris trying to throw the block. On second down, delay blitz coming. There's the screen, and Wilson's going to get buried. Thrown back for a loss by the free safety, Eric Jones. Well, how do you combat the blitz? One way is you throw a screen. They were all over that. Duke's aggressive front seven is going to be something that East Carolina is going to have trouble penetrating. They've got to throw the ball over the top of them. Oh, that's a big hit. That is a big hit by Jones right there. But that's what they're going to have to do. Don't even bother trying to penetrate these guys on the ground. They've got to throw over the top of them into the backfield. Third down from the 19-yard line. Gerard with the rolling pocket. Trying to buy some time and throws over the head of Chapel. East Carolina will be forced to punt it away. Big number 93, Chris Combs. One of the finest defensive tackles in the ACC and in the nation. He's an All-American candidate all over Garrard. But look at Garrard. He got it drilled to the now. ground by a 270-pound guy. Bay, He's jogging back coming. to the line as if he wasn't Three hit to the sideline. First incomplete Andrew pass for Garrard. And now Andrew Bays on to kick it away. His second punt of the day. Should be pretty good field position once again for the Blue Devils. A flag on the play. A booming kick. And Ertel Jack has to back up to his 25. Good special teams play downfield. And the tackle made for East Carolina by Eric Hines. We'll have to see about the flag. Ertel Jack's a bit surprised there. He thought he had Hines beat. Hines came up from behind him on the adjustment. He's still confused. Huh? Who got me? How did I fall down? Well, the penalty is going to go against East Carolina. And likely Duke will make them kick it again. The coaching decision behind this usually is because the coverage team has to run farther and harder and work harder than the return team does. And when they've got to go back down consecutively, if you've got one guy... The on the kicking team, holding six men on the line. Five yards, repeat, fourth down. If they've got to run down a second time consecutively, you'll have a guy or two that'll be tired and might not get down as fast. That's the thinking. Andrew Bay will 
Now, now, so far, East Carolina, the more penalized two. team. And, again, and they are going to be forced now to move five Jack. yards closer to the end zone and give Ertel Jack a little bit more room to try to make something happen. Andrew Bays is senior out of Hyattsville, Maryland. He's been getting away some boomers. He'll have to do it again now with his heels right on the end zone. Not as good a kick. Takes an East Carolina roll, and it will roll dead at the 42-yard line. That's where Duke is going to start things out. First and 10 after a 43-yard kick. Well, on Thursday, the Yankees and Indians, or the Cubs and the Reds, on Baseball Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, on Fox Sports Net. Yanks and Indians are battling for the best record in the American League. Take a look at it right now. Cleveland with a slight advantage over the Yankees. And these teams are very familiar with one of themselves. Big night of baseball on Baseball Thursday. The Yankees and the Indians here on Fox Sportsnet. Romine's oh got his man, Ertel Jack, down to the 40-yard line, an 18-yard pickup on first down. But a whistle is blowing. Everybody's back at the line of scrimmage. Take a look at the protection once again. You've got two backs in there to pick up the blitz. There's Pierce. And they attack the middle again where the inexperienced safety, Mazik, and Satterfield, who is not playing up to the place where the coaches think that he ought to right now. Makes a good tackle, but way down the field. It goes for not, however, because of the penalty. Well, apparently there was a tackle in the middle of that interior offensive line as well that resulted in the holding call. And so now, instead of a big game, Duke is going to be backed up to their own 32-yard line. And Duke can't afford to do that. It's one thing to make a completion once in a while, Scott. It's hard to make consecutive completions and keep the chains moving till you're in scoring position. They just can't afford to lengthen the field like this. Signs of blitz and they fall back out of it. Roman setting up a screen. Epperson can't get away. John Williamson among those swarming to the ball. Swarming to the ball is right. This is a, a speed defense designed for great athletes to use speed pursuit to close on the ball. You'll see that whoever's got the ball is going to have a purple jersey draped all over him no matter where the field he is. There's Robine on his face again. It's aggressive. It's proactive. And now it's set up as second down and long with the blitz coming again. Romine hit as he throws, and it is picked off. Pernell Griffin with the interception at the 36-yard line of the Blue Devils. Griffin with the interception. Jeff Carr with the responsibility for it. He just drilled Romine as he was throwing this football. This ball just goes up in the air, and now it's just a punt. A lot of the offensive guys don't even know that the ball's still flying. You can see number 30 Pierce there. But look at this hit by Carr. Whoa, in the, yeah! Oh, that hurts. When you get driven into the ground on your ribs like that, that, ow. Scott, that, you don't breathe for about 10 minutes after that. I don't breathe for longer than that, pal. On first down. Gerard with the open receiver. Not a whole lot there. Another big hit. This time coming from the Duke defensive unit from D. Darius Clark. You can hear that all the way up here. These guys are flying around the field. And I love it about this. Listen to the sound of this. Now these are two cross-state rivals that do not like each other. Man. Well, that's plastic on plastic. There is no cushion there. That's football. A lot of work for East Carolina for a gain of a yard. And now, inside the 30-yard line is Leonard Henry getting his first significant action. Going to set up a third down and short for East Carolina. Henry, the sophomore out of Clinton, North Carolina. Henry, probably the better running threat between himself and Jamie Wilson. Jamie Wilson's better coming out of the backfield, which is why he gets the start. 
But when they need a big play on the ground, they look to Henry. They'll have to get it down just inside the 26-yard line. Pressure coming. Gerard found the man, but Rashawn Burns, a tight end, couldn't hang on down at the 25-yard line. Boy. Fourth down coming up. Our national car rental game summary. Gerard 8 for 10 thus far with a touchdown pass. Lenhart has been the difference in this one with three field goals. And the airborne attack of Duke has produced 151 yards, but also two interceptions. This is going to be a 46-yard field goal attempt for Miller. And he's not going to make it. And Miller opened so strong against West Virginia. Three for three in Erickson Stadium. Two of them over 40 yards. And Steve Logan told us it's been maybe a decade since he can remember a place kicker hitting three for three with two of them over 40 yards. And they're counting on Miller to really shore this up. Now, Miller is a guy that's here on a golf scholarship. He's a scratch golfer, Scott. As a matter of fact, during, uh, during camp in the summer on a Lee Trevino designed golf course, he took a day off and hit one under par. They expect him standing over putts in pressure situations to bring that psyche to kicking for him. Just like the rest of us, a day off, you go out and shoot 71. First down from the 30, and Romine throws it away. A lot of coverage downfield as he tried to find Scotty Montgomery. The second down now coming up. I think Romine was told by Ben Bennett, the quarterback coach, that time around to throw the ball down the field to loosen up that front seven of East Carolina that's just really causing havoc up front. On second down, a little bit more protection in for Romine. Three wide receivers and a single back. Little swing pass. And out of the backfield, Epperson is going to make it out to the 37-yard line. A seven-yard pickup on second down. You want to find out more about Conference USA? Go to their new redesigned website at www.c-usa.org for the latest on all the sports of Conference USA. And, uh, what I like about it, there's lots of pictures on it. That means I can understand it, Scott. Third down now. Nose of the football at the 37. Romine running away from pressure and finding the man for the first down. Richmond Flowers is out across the 46-yard line. Somebody is going to be open down there eventually. Romine's trick is to find him. This time he finds him under extreme duress. Take a look at him get forced out of the pocket. Even though he moves it, he still gets forced a little bit and he's able to find the open man. That, that's the thing that they were most concerned about coming into this game, at game tempo. Would Romine be able to find Flowers, Montgomery, those other wide receivers as they came open? His dad was an All-America at Tennessee, played in the NFL with the Cowboys and Giants. On first down, again it is Epperson, but this time he is met in the backfield by a guy having a huge first half. Pernell Griffin makes the tackle after a short game. Griffin read this and just attacked. He's going to come from this direction right here. He just reads it, and look where he meets Epperson, right at the line of scrimmage. That's what good linebackers do. When they make a decision, they shoot their gun, and you can tell if they did by where they make the hit. Former freshman All-America. You can see the running game has been shut down both ways. Big rush coming on second down, and the throw over the head of Flowers. Well, was... We talked a bit about Pernell Griffin, the sophomore out of Williamson, North Carolina. And you can see, last week, ended up having a big game in terms of tackles and hurries. He was the second leading tackler last season. Well, the fact they've got so many hurries means that they bring him blitzing the quarterback a lot. Just a sophomore, a young kid, but he goes where they tell him with enthusiasm. And now here is the 12th man for East Carolina. Rising to their feet on third down. Romine hit as he throws, and it's an incomplete pass. 
Again, tremendous pressure on Romine. Looked like Devon Claybrooks was the first one there. Claybrooks has been winning the one-on-one -on -one match with Wes White at left tackle so far in this game. That was just not a blitz that got him there, but rather a good pass rush move. So now Brian Morton, the punter, come on and kick it away for the Blue Devils with just over two minutes left here in the first half. Morton at 36 yards on his first kick of the day. There's a guy who can generate some excitement in bringing him back, Keith Stokes. And now a timeout. East Carolina down to one. We wish to now coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, Kevin and Kellen will have scores and highlights for you. Also, a report on Notre Dame and Purdue. And all of the first half statistics. Penn State, of course, went down to the wire today with their arrival to Pitt Panthers. We'll have some highlights of that one for you. Would the number two team in the country escape today at home? Well, Pitt isn't Pitt anymore. They're U Pitt. Sorry. They're U Pitt. They have changed their moniker. It's going to take a while, pal. We're Pittsburgh. So now Bays gets into it. Stokes. From the 17, watch him go. And just ripped out as he tried to get to the middle of the field. There were big open spaces without that saving tackle. Stokes, as we said, broke six of them last year at junior college. In terms of punt returns, led the nation in punt return average. Well, now you've got two minutes to go in the half. If you're East Carolina, what do you do? Your running game has been completely stopped by the front seven of Duke. What you do here is get your wide receivers involved in this game. First down from the 31. That's Floyd, the tight end, in motion. Play action for Gerard. Here they come at him again. Throwing downfield. The man is there. Stokes made the catch. He made the catch down at the 23-yard line of the Duke Blue Devils. This is that cannon arm that Gerard has. Look at how long it takes him to finally deliver this football. Stokes is way down the field when he's finally able to throw it, and it's right on stride. Stokes came from all the way on the opposite side of the field that time. 46 yards on the completion. East Carolina now inside the Duke 25. Gerard again. Got his man, Artie Powell, and he'll make it down to the 15-yard line. A pickup of nearly nine yards on first down. Well, here's a strategy we just talked about, Scott. The running game is not working. What do you do? Put, turn it over to your wide receivers. Two plays in a row to the wide receivers, and they're down there in scoring position within about 40 seconds. Powell, who came to East Carolina as a quarterback, now a big wide receiver and a big target for Gerard. On second down, the option, and Wilson's got a lane. Can he stay in bounds? He is in. A flag down on the play. A flag down on the play. And we'll have to wait and see. Looks like it might be coming back. I'll tell you, two guys paid a big price on this one. One of them was the quarterback, Gerard. He got drilled on that pitch by Chris Combs. But Chris Combs is the guy that came off the field. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, for the foul, repeat second down. Look at that hit. But you know who comes off the field is this guy. This guy stands up, and he's fine. That's a tough, tough quarterback. Steve Logan doesn't have to be too worried about the physical hits that his quarterback takes. You hate to see an extra hit, though, lumped on a guy in a play that doesn't end up counting. Second down, they've got to get it to the 13-yard line to move the sticks. Gerard with time. 
throws into coverage, and it's knocked down. Kevin Lewis nearly stepped in and had himself an interception. Look at his calmness of Gerard. 45 seconds to go. He knows he's going to be blitzed, and he's sort of strutting around that field, kind of like Warren Moon. But if you took Warren Moon and you stuffed Lawrence Taylor in his body, that would be about the size of Gerard. But his demeanor as he's leading this team is really impressing me right now. It produced a victory in the last minute last week in Charlotte. Third down. Gerard, major pressure coming. Did get rid of it, but not a whole lot there for Leonard Henry as he's going to get driven out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And he struts off the field or strides off the field as if he weren't even touched. He's really showing me something, Gerard. I, I'm, I'm liking what he's doing. So now a second field goal attempt for the freshman Kevin Miller. Missed out a 47-yarder. This one will be from 38 yards away for the lead. This one does have the distance, and it is good. Closing moments of the first half of play, and East Carolina has taken the lead back by one. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. East Carolina has just retaken the lead here in the closing moments of the first half. On a field goal by Kevin Miller. Steve Logan's team doing a good job in the final two minutes of halves. 17 points when executing the two-minute drill. Three of them coming today. Kevin Miller. The big play, of course, is quarterback Gerard. A 46-yard hookup to put that man in the scoring range. And now Miller will kick it away. Duke has had opportunities. They have moved the ball effectively, especially through the air here in the first half. And now with three timeouts left, we'll see what the strategy will be based on this kickoff. And you can hear the Duke players yelling, watch the squib. They're worried about a little short squib kick. A trick play here. Miller instead will send it deep. Montgomery will try to make something happen from his three-yard line. The lanes closed down. A flag on the play. And Montgomery will get it out to the 25-yard line. There's been a lot of penalties in this game. You would expect that from Duke just being their first game of the year. You don't Rock expect the that from East Carolina. On the return team, half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, the BYU, whenever this happened to us, we always thought, good, more total yards before we score the touchdown. That's we how were, things work at BYU. That's exactly how it works. And, and this offense that Carl Franks has brought up, he coordinated this for a long time for Steve Spurrier in Florida. Down there it's known as the fun and gun. Up here it's known as airborne. But it's the same philosophy. Hey, boys, that just means more total yards. You wonder what the strategy will be right now as Duke is beginning to catch up in the penalty race. And they are keeping it on the ground, at least for the first carry. Out across the 15-yard line is B.J. Hill, and now quickly to the line with just 18 seconds left in the half. The Blue Devils, they do have all three of their timeouts left. And once again, it is going to be Hill, this time getting out to the 20-yard line on what will be, it would appear, the final play of the half. They will move the sticks. The clock being stopped for the first down. Just two seconds remaining. Everybody wants out, but the officials are saying, no, you kind of got to keep playing this thing. Now they wave it off, and that'll do it for the first half of play. East Carolina with a 10-9 lead. The only touchdown of the first half coming from inside the red zone. As Gerard looked for his primary target, Lamont Chapel, the juggling catch, and the touchdown for East Carolina. First half's only touchdown and a one-point lead for East Carolina. Lewis Johnson. 
All right, thanks. Coach, Duke seems to have your number, a late field goal to get you back in this game. What do you tell your team at halftime? Well, it's just what I suspected at the first half. We've got to find out what it is they're doing on defense because we, we have no game film really to operate off of and offensively as well. So we're going to have to do some halftime adjustments, go to work. All right, Steve Logan, thanks. See you in the second half. And let's get out to the West Coast for our Nissan Halftime Report with Kellen Winslow and Kevin Frazier. Kevin. Greenville, where Scott Graham, Trevor Maddich, and Lewis Johnson are standing by. This is the Nissan Halftime Report. Another half of football from Greenville should be good. 10-9 right now. As the teams come back out onto the field, the Pirates leading by a score of 10 to 9. And for all the talk during the course of the week about the airborne attack, for all the talk about the West Coast offense and the option, Trevor, this game has pretty much come down to defense in the first half. Well, it is defense. The defenses on both sides have made the line of scrimmage about as hospitable as the no man's land at the Battle of Verdun in World War I. Nobody's moving through there. You can see defensive players flying up, making big hits, blitzing the line of scrimmage, and there's no way. There's no way that a ball is going to go on the ground through there. It's tough enough for the quarterbacks going through the air. You look at East Carolina, Forrest Foster, number 37, has been a one-man gang, supported by hits on the quarterback by linebacker Jeff Carr, and it has just been an absolute dominant defensive performance by both teams. When you curl up like that, Scott, that's known as fetusing up, puts you in the fetal position. Now, right now, you can see so far the total yardage and time of possession being dominated by the Blue Devils. It is, and time of possession is being dominated there because they've thrown a lot of really short passes. So far in this game, Scott, there have been oh, there's only been one run as long as 11 yards. Six passes have gone for more than 20 yards on both teams. And so as you look at the stats there, you can see that the game is thrust onto the hands of the quarterbacks now. Well, as we continue here at halftime, let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Today's third quarter replays. Hey Steve, hey Steve, thanks. You know, I talked to Carl Franks just a moment ago about his first half, his first half of coaching actually as a head coach. He said on the negative side, there were at least three TD opportunities that were missed. So he wants greater concentration between his quarterbacks and receivers. But in terms of the defense, that was the plus. He was pleased with the way these guys have played, wants the intensity to continue. He said before the game, you know, he had lots of butterflies. He only grew up uh, an hour and a half from Greenville. But as the game has gone on, he's settled down and gotten into his coaching mode. And he'll think about this whole thing, this first head coaching opportunity once the game is over, Steve. Well, right now for the Duke Blue Devils, that has been the story. Lenhart with three field goals. And in terms of what this team is trying to do, that may not be the payoff they're hoping for. Meantime, Chapel has very much gotten involved in the first half, something he was unable to do in the win last week against West Virginia. There is Chapel, a threat again, this time from a yard deep in the end zone. All kinds of coverage coming downfield and nowhere for him to turn. Forward progress stopped out of the 14-yard line, and that's where East Carolina will take over. Now the East Carolina offense, another opportunity to come out and make something happen. And they've got to do it against an experienced Duke defense. This Duke defense has got 10 returning starters from last year. Overall, Duke has 19 starters returning from a team that went 4-7 and seven and was only 6 points away from a winning season. Once again, Gerard hitting on a lot of passes. One big 46-yard play, accounting for a lot of that yardage. Option play on first down, and now try to bring Gerard down. Out across the 30-yard line, he's going to make it out to the 31 for a 12-yard pickup. Well, there's Gerard. You can wrap him up, but wrestling to the ground is the problem. Take a look at number 93. Come inside the block and try to make the tackle. An ordinary quarterback is going to go down. Problem is the hole is big enough that he's able to get through there and then make three guys drag him to the ground. That 17-yard gain is the long running play of the game thus far. First down from the 31. And now Wilson, who's not been able to get on track yet today, chased down from behind. Well, it looks like what Steve Logan is going to try to do here is get that running game on track. 
Well, they only had 15 yards in the whole first half. And as you look at number 23, Wilson, take a look at what he sees. Where is there to run? There's nowhere there. There's nowhere there. There's nothing but blue and white jerseys in front of him. Nate Krill, who stepped in from linebacker to play a defensive line spot due to an injury to Gannon Shepard, made that tackle. On second down. Down to the outside, and all kinds of road. First down, yardage and more for the former quarterback turned H-back, Bobby Weaver. Garrard split time with him at quarterback last year. Today, he hooks up with him for a first down out to the 46. Well, this goes buddy to buddy. Weaver was the starting quarterback last year. Garrard became the starter when Weaver got injured. But Weaver is such a great athlete that they wanted to make sure he was on the field. So they moved him out to wide receiver to get him onto the field. He's a double threat to catch and to throw from there. On first down. Once again, the option. This time it was option one to give up the middle. And out near midfield is Jamie Wilson. Jamie Wilson carrying the football up the middle. Again, trying to get Jamie Wilson involved in this offense. They don't want to put it directly onto Gerard and the wide receivers. They want to keep trying as long as they can to force some sort of balance. Those of the football just shy of midfield now, and on second down, it's Stokes in motion. Gerard, the quick throw, and Chappell's got first down yardage down to the 40-yard line. The tackle made by Darius Clark after a quick slant that opened for Chappell. Well, Jamie Wilson not running the ball, but watch him block. Watch the cut block here on 93 Chris Combs. He's going to come through, and that's Jamie Wilson right there. Cutting down the big man, allowing the passing lane. Chapel, big play guy. They've gotten him involved today. He has been involved from the get-go this year, trying to make the younger players play better. Another completed pass, this time down to the 33-yard line as Marcellus Harris comes open. That's going to leave them about three yards shy of the first down. Well, there's a personal relationship between Gerard and Combs back there again. Combs was in the backfield. This time, nobody was able to block him. He knocked Garrard down, made him pay the price for completing that pass to Harris. Numbers last year for Marcellus Harris. Second down now. They've got to get it to the 30-yard line. Floyd, the tight end in motion, trying to help clear the way. And nowhere for Wilson to go. Maybe a gain of a yard. Getting it down to the 32. He'll still be a couple shy of the first down. Now, what is your call right now if you're Doug Martin? Right now, if you're Doug Martin, I think you concede that Duke has taken away the line of scrimmage. And you continue going to what's been working, and that is throwing the ball over. Short passes to the flat to wide receivers down the field. Remember what's working in this game so far, Scott. There are six plays to wide receivers by both teams of more than 20 yards. Nine yards on the day for Wilson. Is he going to get the call here? Give up the middle, and he does get the call for first down yardage inside the 30-yard line. So Jamie Wilson moves the sticks again for the Pirates, who have now worked their way down inside the Duke 30 on this first drive of the second half. Well, what opens it here is a left guard, Aaron Walker. He's going to come out and get a block on Kevin Lewis, and that's going to be what creates the hole. That's a very big guy on a very little guy, Lewis. First down, three receivers to choose from for Gerard. And off the quick drop, he's got his tight end, Corey Floyd, making the catch and getting down to the 22-yard line. The ball came loose, and it does belong to Duke. Another big play defensively for the Blue Devils as they turn off a drive from East Carolina. Well, that's a play that might ordinarily go to Rashawn Burns, who's their number one tight end. But remember, early in the game, you're on number 85 on the right of your screen, makes a good catch, but the ball comes out. And early in the game, the starter, Rashawn Burns, went out with being chopped in the legs. That gives Floyd more of a roll, and when you've got a young guy that's not used to getting hit like that, the ball can pop. That's the Lama Lure that made that hit. The Lamalure makes the recovery with the left arm out. And now first down for the Blue Devils as they'll turn it back to Epperson. And he gets turned away after a short gain on first down.
Once again, Carr making the hit as he got into the backfield. Scotty Montgomery, we told you he'd be a factor. Five receptions for 90 yards in the first half. Trying to become the first Duke receiver to lead the team in receiving for three straight years since Stan Crisson did it back in the early 1960s. On second now. All kinds of time off play action. Here comes the pursuit. And the ball is incomplete. Romine had time, but no open receivers. Great job of coverage by the East Carolina secondary. Well, that's Forrest Foster again, all over Flowers. And he's been he's been just devastating the game plan of Duke. Because Duke is wanting to get their great wide receivers one-on-one. -on -one, and they have. The problem is the one-on-one -on -one coverage by Forrest Foster has been so tight they haven't been able to complete the ball against it. Courtney Mozzie, the referee with the call. Holding on the offense, 10 yard friendly, previous spot, repeat second down. See if we can find where the holding is here. Might have been right there. Looked like Norris McCleary got held by Robert Fleming trying to get inside. Fleming, the left guard, called for the hold and the ball pushed back now inside the 13 yard line. Romine with a quick drop, got the open receiver. His tight end out across the 22-yard line as Terrence Dupree gets a lot of it back. On a quick play, just releasing off the line of scrimmage. Well, Dupree's right here. He's going to come out and release late. They allow this defense to come in on their blitzes, and Dupree just takes advantage of it by getting out into the flat. Well, that's going to set up a third down now as Dupree makes the catch. A little over 11 yards a catch for Terrence Dupree here today. On third down, Romine has Dupree again, but short of the first down. The hit made by Pernell Griffin, the linebacker who stayed with him step for step. It's interesting that they're getting Dupree and the tight ends more involved in this passing game. Duke expects the tight ends to put up big numbers in this airborne offense. And so far today, they haven't really gotten the ball to them. That's a halftime adjustment that Ben Bennett and Carl Franks must have made to get those tight ends back into this game plan. There is Boomer Brian Morton back to kick it away. Stokes, the dangerous return man, lining it up. From his 32. Got to make the first man miss. He's got to make his own man miss, too. Couldn't make everybody miss on the play, and he gets dropped, but East Carolina will get the football back. Third quarter action from Greenville, a one-point lead for the Pirates. College Football Saturday on Fox Sportsnet is brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. More of the beauty of the East Carolina University campus. Today here in Greenville, East Carolina leading it by a point. Scott Graham along with Trevor Maddich and Lewis Johnson as well. Lewis, they talk about explosion plays here at East Carolina. Yeah, they do. They talk about it a lot, Scott. And, and this term explosion play means a play that's 15 yards or more. Well, last week, East Carolina had 15, 13 of those explosion plays, seven rushing and six in the air. So far in this first half, East Carolina has only had one rushing and four passing, a far cry from last week's performance. Now it's hey, Gerard. And on the late pitch, got it to Stokes. Little throw the arm ahead and knock the tackler down as Keith Stokes gets it out to the 40-yard line. Now this, this is why it takes so long to practice. Gerard is going to come down the line, and now watch him wait. This is the key to the option, is waiting. He's waiting till the guy comes to him and forces him to pitch it. Now, when he sees all this and nothing out there, that's when he tosses that football. And that's hard to practice offensively, but it's harder uh, even so, even more, to practice against defensively. On 
second down, straight up the middle, and Wilson gets it into Duke territory at the 47-yard line. A pickup of 13 yards and a first down for the Pirates. Well, Wilson's busted right up the middle here. Let's take a look at what, at what he sees when he comes through. I don't, running backs and how they see holes is something that just amazes me. Because from up here, you can see holes open. But Jamie Wilson, when he's on the ground, I have no idea how you can find those things. Wilson trying to get back into the same groove he was in last week. Now a swing. And look at him make a miss, but just too many to try to get through for Keith Stokes, who's going to lose three yards on the play. When the last guy that hit him was Todd Delamalur, son of Joe Delamalur, all pro for the Buffalo Bills on the Ring of Fame at Rich Stadium. Take a look at the hit that 45 Delamalur lays on him right here. Now, Stokes is just a little bitty guy. He's slowing down and right. Oh, look at the head snap, Scott. That head snap is what players look for when they look at the game film. And when they see that happen, the head snaps back. Everyone in the room goes, oh. Just like you did. Well, that's a conditioned response. On second and long. Rashawn Burns, the tight end, inside the 40-yard line and down to the 39. 11-yard pickup for the East Carolina tight end. Well, you put a big guy like that out there because you feel that he can make the catch and then drag a defensive back, a cornerback with him to make the first down. Now look how big he is. They figure that somebody's going to get on him, but they figure that he's big enough out at the sideline to drag him along for more yardage. East Carolina. Right now, using Burns the tight end. And on the option play, Gerard fights for first down yardage. There's how tough it is to bring him down. Finally, Ryan Stallmeyer did it, but not until the sticks move for the Pirates. Well, this kind of leg drive is what Ricky Williams of Texas had last year. I want you to watch the leg drive after he gets hit. Most of the key yards here come after he's originally touched. After he's hit is when he goes and gets that first down. Pirates have moved the ball well here in the second half. Behind Gerard, now back to the air. Had the man briefly, but Corey Floyd could not come up with a catch down inside the 20-yard line. When we talk about that personal relationship between Gerard and Combs, Chris Combs knocked him on his back again. And once again, Gerard got right back up. If you're Combs, you've got to wonder what this kid is made of. This is a young sophomore quarterback. Watch when number 93 come in and take him down. Combs is going to be very likely a first-round draft choice, and he has not been able to subdue Garrard. Preseason candidate for the Outland Trophy, but got there a step late, still the incomplete, and now this pass is complete. The catch made by Arnie Powell down outside the 25-yard line, still short of the first down. It'll be third down and short for the Pirates. Garrard on the ground again. Take a look at what happens again. Now watch Gerard. He's going to deliver the pass to the right guy. And who hits him? His old friend Chris Combs. And Gerard popped up. Chris Combs, again, is limping off the sideline after an encounter with, uh, with Gerard. Oh, well, Combs comes out. Oh, check that. That's, I'm sorry. That's Krill that's limping off. It'll be Nate Krill coming back out again. Sean Johnson, a freshman. In on the defensive line now. Third down and short. Pushing the pile forward. We'll have to wait and see about the spot of the football for first down yardage for East Carolina. Pirates went with a straight dive. With Jamie Wilson doing the carrying. Oh, they've mixed the up spot the of the pass and the run really well in this drive. The spot of the football looks like he has it just inside the 24-yard line. First down, East Carolina. This is just a dive right up the middle. 
Well, Wilson was part of a tandem who last year, along with Leonard Henry, combined for nearly 1,300 yards rushing and eight touchdowns. First down, Pirates at the 24-yard line. Gerard dropped in the backfield. Chris Combs meets up with him again. I, I just, Chris Combs just does not get blocked. When you talk to ACC offensive line coaches, they'll tell you that the, one of the guys that's the very hardest to block, no matter who you ask, whether it's on Florida State, whether it's any team in the ACC, they'll always mention Chris Combs. And so far, he has been winning one-on-one -on -one battles with blockers all game long, and that's what puts him in the backfield every play. Tenth play of this drive. It is second down from the 26. Gerard with time to throw. The tip ball and a pickoff. Stallmeyer down with the interception. You may see a face mask call on the return. But Ryan Stallmeyer, the senior from Cincinnati, comes up with the deflected interception to turn East Carolina away again. Personal foul. Face mask. On the return. 15 yards. First down. We talk about Combs defeating individual blocks. Watch what he does. Combs is right here. He's going to spin back inside. And when he does, he gets a hand up in the air and tips that football. There's a face mask on Stallmeyer. Well, East Carolina moving the ball, but turned away again, still leading it by a point. Three turnovers for East Carolina, and the Duke defense once again comes up big. Once again, turning the Pirates away. Still trailing it by a point, though, now as they take over first and ten at their own 41-yard line. Gives straight through the middle, and... Not a whole lot of running room once again. Well, a tough day for Lou Holtz today. Let's go to our College Football Saturday studio for an update with Kevin Frazier. Indeed it is, Scott, because Lou Holtz taking on a very tough Georgia team. That is Charles Grant, 6'3", 266 pounds. He's listed as a linebacker. Nobody touches him as he goes into the end zone. Number 12, Georgia leads 7-zip. Now it appears that Ugga, the new dog, is working out for Georgia between the hedges today. At least early. On second down. Romine got a man. Ertlejack makes the catch down near the 40-yard line of the Pirates. Flag down on the play. Another big play that looks like it'll be called back. And that happened to Earl Jack in the first half. He caught a pass. It was called back for holding as well. They've had a lot of holding success. On the offense. Ten yards. Previous spot. Repeat second down. Duke's had a lot of success attacking the center of the defensive backfield of East Carolina. They've had a lot of yards negated. Big plays called back because of holding, Scott. Well, in this case, they're going to get sent all the way back to their 32-yard line. Erdeljack, the sophomore out of Oakmont, Pennsylvania, missed last season. They're making some big catches here, and they've been erased. On second down, Romine's got big pressure coming. Gets the completed pass, going to be good for just a couple, but he was buried on the play. Back of the line of scrimmage, Scotty Montgomery did come up with a catch. And he was buried on a play that the offensive line coach is going to pitch a fit about. There's only three guys that are rushing. All the rest of them come out. And when three guys come, your quarterback should not get drilled. This is number 91, Clay Brooks, working again on White and just gets hit hard. When three guys are rushing like that, that's a point of pride. And that offensive line right now coming to that line, they're embarrassed about that. I always was when that happened. Third down, they've got to get it across midfield for the first. Off the low snap, Romine throwing and into a crowd. It's picked off. Chris Satterfield with the interception for East Carolina. Romine tried to force in with multiple coverage and this time he got burned as East Carolina will take over outside the Duke 46. Look at how, watch his eyes. Well, as you see here, you'll see Montgomery with a lot of people that are going to be around him. But he's open there. He's open. He's open. And the ball doesn't show up until late. 
Well, each team thus far has had opportunities here in the second half. Each has stumbled along the way. East Carolina is still with the lead. East Carolina by a point over Duke. Linebacker Jeff Carr says this is a meeting of two different worlds. You got a, a team that's coming in here from an ACC school, and they're more of a, they're more of a, uh, it's kind of like more of a white collar world for them. I mean, this is more of a blue collar school here, I think. It's more, that's more of a white collar school there, I guess. You got the doctors and the lawyers up there down here. We got the old tobacco farmers that are coming here. To, uh, they're, they're all fans and everything. These guys just support you to no end. I mean, they, they, they believe in you, and right now that we beat West Virginia, they really believe in us now. I and mean, now we've got to go out and prove it then, but we can still uh, continue to position. And now a first down for East Carolina off the pump fake, a deep throw, and it's going to be incomplete. Running out of real estate was Arnie Powell down that left sideline. Well, they tried coverage. to take advantage of a matchup again. We talked about Jeff Carr and what kind of an impact player that he can be. And what he has done here is helped his team defensively get right back into a scoring range again with the ball on the Duke 46-yard line. East Carolina has had two opportunities that have fizzled here in the second half, still with a one-point lead. They give to Wilson. Not a lot of room, maybe a gain of a yard. Now, Jamie Wilson stopped after a gain of a yard and now an injured player down on the field. It's like it is Derek Gamble, the starting right tackle. Gamble being tended to. Well, tomorrow, the NFL is back. NFL this morning premieres tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific with Chris Myers, Jackie Slater, and Marv Levy previewing the day's slate of action. The special guest, Chris Spielman. NFL this morning, tomorrow on Fox Sports Net, Chris Spielman announces retirement on August 30th for Pro Bowls for the linebacker. Third down now, Gerard, big blitz coming and couldn't quite get the time before he had to throw the football. Darius Clark came flying in on a safety blitz and laid a hit on Garrard that forced the incompletion. Well, this time they bring the linebackers and they're going to bring Clark right up onto the right side of your screen, number 13, completely unblocked, and drives him into the ground. Both of these quarterbacks are going to be carried out of here in a bucket if they keep getting hit like this. So now it is kick time again for Andrew Bays. A new return man, Ronnie Hamilton, is back at his own 10-yard line to take the kick. And Hamilton called for the fair catch. Just outside the 13-yard line. That's where Duke's going to take over offensively after a 31-yard kick. Well, Andrew Bays does his job and buries the Duke offense here late in the third quarter. Now we told you about Jeff Carr, and once again, he has been a big part of the action making things happen. Well, he's been driving Romine into the ground, just planting him into the ground. That's just devastating what he's been doing. And not just to Romine, but to the big guys, too. He's been hitting tight ends, receivers, running backs, but especially Romine has been getting killed by this guy. Drop for Romine, and the throw into coverage again, and this time the ball is batted down by Travis Mazee. Lewis Johnson, what do you got? Well, you know, sometimes it's difficult for players to adjust to a new system that a coach brings in, and with Tim Rose coming in as a defensive coordinator, but I asked that very question to Jeff Carr, and he said, you know, when he saw all the blitz packages that those guys were going to have, he said it was easy. He was in. It's like letting the dogs loose, and he loves it. Second down, he's coming again. This time the throw out to Montgomery, trying to make some men miss. He gets it out to the 17-yard line after a short pickup. It'll be third down. Well, this is third and long, and this is another thing that this defense is designed to do. It's designed to create 
first, second and long and then third and long situations so that you have better third down percentage from a defense standpoint. This plays exactly into their hands. If you thought they were blitzing before, on third and long, way deep in Duke's territory, look for the whole house to show up this time. And now Romine's going to want a timeout as the folks in purple get up and begin yelling. Duke uses their first timeout of the second half. Buried back deep in their own territory with a big third down coming up. College football Saturday next week. Four more games beginning at noon Eastern time. Boston College will be at Navy. Ron Dane, Heisman Trophy candidate for number nine Wisconsin, visiting the Bearcats of Cincinnati. And Air Force at Washington. Stanford at number 19 Arizona. College football Saturday next week, beginning at noon Eastern time. 158 yards for Ron Dane, the guy we're talking about today, and he is a guy who is a definitive Heisman Trophy candidate and a prototype big back. Well, he's chasing Ricky Williams' career all-time rushing record. Ricky bested Tony Dorsett's record last year, and now we're looking to have it done again by the big back from Wisconsin. Score there was 50 to 10, Wisconsin won. I mean, you're talking about a team that has great talent that's on a roll, and there's a difference there. I've been on teams that haven't had good talent, but they've been on a roll. I've been on good teams that have had great talent, and things haven't gone their way. Right now, Wisconsin has built up a big crest of momentum with a lot of outstanding players. For now, Spencer Romine will have to deal once again with the crowd as they're on their feet. Third down, got to get it to the 24-yard line to move to six. Flag on the play. Romine throwing into a crowd, and it's knocked down. Carr nearly had the pickoff out across the 30-yard line. The ball was intended for Richmond Flowers. Romine once again taking a beating. Let's see what this penalty is, though. Illegal procedure on the offense. Let's see who hits Romine this time around. He's got to move out because of pressure in the pocket. And it's green, number 50, that drills him again. Both of these quarterbacks are going to end up at a clinic somewhere, getting a hot tub, a sauna, and a rub down for the next week. Because, you know, the, the cumulative effect of that kind of pounding on your body isn't really fully felt, Scott, until about two days later. And believe me, you can't sleep at night because everywhere you roll over, something new hurts. That's why they only play this game once a week. The kick by Morton, and it's a good one. Stokes backed up all the way to his 28-yard line. Now trying to get ahead of steam up as he gets across the 40 and out to the 41. 55 yards on the punt from Brian Morton. Well, this, as we said, is a game that they play once a week. However, big time of the year for the game they play almost every day. Yankees and Indians, Cubs, Reds. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net. Beginning at 7, the Indians and Yankees battling for the home field advantage. And, of course, the Cubs at Sammy Sosa trying to break the one-year-old 70 home run mark in Major League Baseball. Last season with 66 of them, this year with 59. And he is out of pace for 67. We'll see if Sammy continues to get hot. Yankees were losers 11 to 10 today at the hands of the Boston Red Sox. They are in a fight with the Indians for the best record in the American League. And now East Carolina has called for a timeout as David Garrard is going to go to the sidelines to talk it over. East Carolina trying for their second win of the year. They've got a one-point advantage over the Duke Blue Devils. Late third quarter and an advantage for East Carolina playing here at home in their home opener at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The fans haven't had too much to enjoy in the second half as in this second half, they've got a sputtered. Well, they've had two long drives and come away with absolutely nothing. And they've got to get down there and take advantage of that before too long. They can't allow Duke to stay in this game like they have. 
Right now, the East Carolina defense is setting the pace of this game. It's up to the Pirates offense now to cash in. On first down from just the outside the 40-yard line. Gerard with play action, pressure coming. Now he's got room to tuck and run. Near first down yardage into Duke territory at the 49-yard line is David Gerard. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh here. That, that was funny. Three, three different Duke Blue Devils hit Gerard. They couldn't get him down until finally he was about five yards out of bounds. And he just sort of tucked up his feet so he wouldn't spill and fall out of control. And he takes out the, the water boy out there. Take a look at Garab when he decides to run. The thing I want you to watch is how many Blue Devils hit him without taking him down. There's Stallmeyer, that's no. There's Lou. There's three guys. He trips finally over that, that yard marker chain thing and takes out the ball boy or the water boy at the end out of bounds. That's, that's pretty funny. Al Garrard told us that as a kid he was a fullback and still has that fullback mentality when he takes the ball down and runs with it. Well, and you can run this kind of option offense with a quarterback like that and West Coast offense with a quarterback like that because he can do them both. Well, a quarterback like this is now Richard Alston as Garrard just limped briefly off the field. So Alston, the redshirt freshman now on, on first down from the 49. Late pitch. Wilson's got room to turn the corner. Now cutting it back. Did he get the block? He tripped and fell. But big yardage down inside the Duke 25-yard line. A 26-yard pickup. Another one of those explosion plays for Jamie Wilson. Well, Steve Logan told us that when Austin comes in the game, don't go get a drink of water because something big is fixing to happen. And right here, he sucks up Lewis. Right here, one of these guys needs to be out here on the pitch man. They're both on the quarterback, and that leaves it wide open for Lewis. And Lewis isn't, or excuse me, Wilson is not supposed to be a fast guy, but he was able to win that on speed. First down for the 23. Option goes the other way this time, and there it goes. Inside the 10-yard line and down to the six is Richard Alston with a carry. Don't get a drink of water. Don't buy a hot dog. Same play, other direction, Richard Alston. This guy makes a great fake right here. And right now, this guy is on pitch, man. This guy is on quarterback being blocked, and that leaves him wide open up into the middle. That's good option football. And for the first time this game, that option is uncorked. Alston ran for 994 yards as an option quarterback as a senior in high school. He's got his team knocking at the door, first and goal for the six. Miller with the extra point try matter much though as East Carolina behind Alston got into the end zone and this is just a straight zone blocking dive play man on man blocking and Wilson finds his way in there great cap to it to an explosive drive this has been a, a grinded out game so far because of the defenses but East Carolina has just uncorked it in this last series and Jamie Wilson who had 183 yards last week has turned it on here in the second half with 52 yards rushing the Buick scoring drive, just four plays to go 59 yards for the Pirates. And Alston in there because of the injury to Garrard. But they want Alston to get as many series as possible. Again, the thought is to manufacture depth. And so he's done well with his opportunities. Kevin Miller's got it teed up. And now the pressure will be on the Duke Blue Devils to get some offensive flow back in this game as the momentum is clearly shifted to the Pirates. Miller with another bomb, and Montgomery's going to get buried. He'll have to take the touchback. We know that Gerard got hurt. Lewis Johnson, how's he doing? Well, Scott, just a few moments ago, trainers had him down on the ground. They seem to be stretching his left hamstring. They also had a bag of ice on the left calf, giving him a massage. He seemed to smile just a little bit to make me think it's not so serious, giving him a lot of fluids. Maybe he had a cramp. We'll have to see if he comes back in. Lewis, he was not injured by that tackle down there. He was injured when he tripped over the yard marker in the chains and got himself tangled up in that, fell down in an awkward position. There he is. That smile on his face. He's a tough guy. We'll see. We'll see how soon he comes back. There's not urgency to get him back because Alston has just really lit things on fire. 
Duke has been shut off without a first down their last two drives. Romine try to correct that right now. Down to the middle of the field for Flowers and a big play. Gets it inside the East Carolina 40-yard line. Straight post pattern and a great throw on the 42-yard gain for Romine. And Monroe, number 21, is a good cover quarterback. That's where he's looking. Romine's looking out there at number 21 instead of number 37 on this man-to-man -man coverage. 37 Foster's been eating him up. But Flowers beats 21 Monroe here, and they've gone to a matchup more in their favor. Big play from Richmond Flowers, and now Duke trying to answer right back. I do not know why they're running the ball like that, though. That has not been working. E.J. Hill turned off right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of a half yard. Time winding down here in the third quarter. East Carolina with all the momentum. And then a big play trying to get Duke back in it as we wind down the third quarter of play. These are the two runs that set up the go-ahead East Carolina touchdown. First is option to the left. They don't cover the pitch man. So Wilson is able to catch that ball, go out and make a big play and explosion, explosion play. This time off the right side, straight zone blocking. Wilson wants that end zone. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Last week, that was the scene, except it wasn't man-made water that was hitting North Carolina. Today, a gorgeous day on the campus of East Carolina University. And the Pirates with an eight-point lead as we begin the fourth quarter after East Carolina dominated the third quarter of play. Complete domination here. And then as you look at first, the reason for that is a halftime adjustment that East Carolina made in their offense. Now Romine's got pressure coming. Fumbles the football, and East Carolina has it. He tried to get away from the pressure, and Carr made the recovery at the 45-yard line. Well, that's Williamson and Howell on the pressure. These halftime adjustments have paid off. There wasn't any film on Duke, especially on their offense, coming into this game. Number 30, Williamson, is the one that strips that football so Carr can jump on it. And that adjustment made at halftime as to how to attack this Duke offense that they had not seen on film before this pays off in a turnover. Carr told us, I want to be the guy making the big plays. Well, there's a recovery there. A lot of turnovers in this one thus far. Gerard back in, going deep downfield. Chapel makes the catch. Home run ball at Chapel, just inside the 12-yard line, a 43-yard pickup. Well, Chapel working on the weakest part of the Duke defense, the corner. Now, Ronnie Hamilton is just a sophomore out there. He's only 5'8", and you can see how much taller Chapel is. And when it comes time to make the play for the football, the height and the athleticism of Chapel wins the day. Here come the Pirates once again, just outside the 11-yard line. Give to the first back through, it's Henry, and he'll get it down near the 8-yard line, about a 3-yard pickup on first down. Well, he had a huge day today, Jeff Carr. He has been, when he's not been attacking the quarterback and creating sacks, he's been jumping on fumbles. This guy's looking to be an All-American candidate this year, and no one more deserving. This three games last year, but the number is very impressive. On second down, Gerard firing, got the tight end. Can't quite get in, now the ball just popped loose. A flag down on the play, a lot going on here down near the one yard line. It looks like they're calling down by contact, so it will not be a fumble. The question is, what does the flag mean? Flag down on the play. We have pass interference on the offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. You look at the fire that East Carolina came out with in the second half, and you got to attribute that to Steve Logan at halftime, lighting it under those guys. This kind of a penalty will just light him on fire even more. Look at this effort by Burns to push into the end zone. And that guy that he just pushed, number 45, 
is De La Malier. That is not an easy guy to drive back over the goal line. It's too bad that that's nullified by this penalty because that's an outstanding individual effort by Burns. And you saw clearly that his knee was down as Delamalur pulled the ball free. Uh, the pass interference call is going to knock Gerard, Gerard and East Carolina back to the 23-yard line. Option play. The late toss. And not able to turn the corner was Leonard Henry. Once again, Delamalur was... Right there among those making the hit, along with Kevin Lewis, the outside linebacker. You know, I just want you to know what an influence Chris Combs has had on this play. Just before Garage was able to pitch that off, Combs, from his interior defensive tackle position, got penetration two yards deep into the offensive backfield and was in the process of dragging him down. Chris Combs is, is a guy that somehow has a knack for not being blocked. And I don't know how he does it. I never do. But... Howie Long is another guy that you knew where he was, but you just couldn't block it. Two receivers to choose from for Gerard. Going up top, wants it all. Knocked away by Ronnie Hamilton as he tried to find Arnie Pell in the corner. Let's go to our college football Saturday studio for an update with Kevin Frazier. Scott, last weekend, Western Michigan 20 points in the second quarter against Florida. How about Central Florida and Edward Mack, a 42-yard touchdown run. The Golden Knights lead number four, Florida, 7 to zip. Now, right now, good start for Central Florida against Steve Spurrier and the Florida Gators. East Carolina now going to have to settle for a field goal attempt of 38 yards. Once again, it has the distance, and it's good for Kevin Miller. Now an 11-point lead, as Miller says. Looks like a made field goal regardless of how far it got over the crossbar by. If you're an East Carolina fan, you've got a lot to celebrate. The Pirates have taken control of this game here in the second half and now have an 11-point lead in this one. Steve Logan talks in terms of beating brand-name programs and getting brand-name victories. Well, he's done his share of it in his time here at East Carolina. I'll tell you, this year, 96, is a real important one because that year, before their affiliation with Conference USA in the bowl tie-in, they went 8-3. and three. They beat those three teams and still did not go to a bowl game. And that's one of the things that being in Conference USA is helping with this program and that they've got a national audience now that can see what they've already accomplished here. He's worked for some big time programs, big time coaches. He says his demeanor's probably closest to John Cooper. Montgomery from his own end zone straight out and across the 30 yard line. He's going to make it out across the 33 and that's where Duke will take over. Now if, if you're Duke Here's what you got to do, Scott. You've got to stop trying to establish anything that you've been struggling to establish. That means the running game. Right now, they've got to go to where their best players are, and that's on the perimeter. Richmond Flowers, Scotty Montgomery, they have got to throw the ball down the field to the wideouts. Don't worry about running that football anymore. It's not working. The Pirates have taken it away. Here's where Airborne may truly get its name. Down by 11 now with 12 and a half minutes left. Romine throwing downfield and incomplete. He was looking for Erdeljack. Couldn't quite get it there. This is College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Coming up next, the in-state rivalry, Iowa and Iowa State. Then later on, out to the Pac-10, Washington State against Stanford, 10-15 Eastern, 7-15 Pacific. Check your local listings as College Football Saturday continues on Fox Sports Net. Romine surveying the scene on second down. Carr was coming after him. The throw is incomplete. Flowers meeting up with Foster out near midfield. Well, Carr's just going to blitz around on a wing stun around the outside. Williamson 
is going to come from here inside. Carr's going to replace him around the outside, and he's going to get chipped off by the blocking back. If not, that's another. That's Pierce on a nice block on Carr. Saved his quarterback from another shot to the ribs. Carr is just everywhere, just like Combs on Duke's defense. If you don't watch for where this guy is, you won't have to ask because he will be with his leg in your pants. ECU trying to create another three and out. The big blitz coming. Carr chasing. The throw is there, but not enough for the first down. Out across the 38-yard line. Once again, Romine was running for his life as he found Epperson. And Carr is coming through here, understand, in maximum protection. They're keeping seven guys in the block. And here comes Carr. He comes around and finds a spot where there is no blocker. Oh, my goodness. Carr doesn't hit him, but Ivan Butler. <laughs> Ivan Butler. And look at this position. That position is known as the cockroach, when you've got both hands and feet up in the air like that. One time again for Morton. And a fair catch called for by Stokes out across the 31-yard line. 11 minutes, 39 seconds left to go. A 36-yard kick. East Carolina takes over again. Chris Combs. Chris Combs will line up over the right guard. Right here. He's going to come right through, but they're going to run the ball right over here. That's pretty good game plan. If you can't block them, run away from them. And there's the hole. On second down, it'll be Stokes in motion for the Pirates. Gerard got his man. Nice catch made by Chapel. And now did not hang on. Couldn't hang out of the football. He had it, lost it, had it, and lost it again. An incomplete pass on second down. The thing, the thing I want you to look at here is how hard Gerard throws this football. We're going to start. Now, here's your All-American 93, Chris Combs. He's going to get blocked by two guys. Oh, <laughs> Gerard gets drilled anyhow in there. But Gerard throws that ball so hard that Chapel can't even hold on to it as Chris Combs is struggling against a double team to try to get to him. Chapel, the man in motion on third down. A delay give, trying to win the race to the outside, and doing it is Leonard Henry. And Henry gets down inside the 37-yard line for an East Carolina first down. Well, that's why Henry's in there, Scott. They don't want to throw the ball to him necessarily. But as a running back, he's the best pure talent that East Carolina has. All the motion goes to the right here. Take a look at everybody coming to the right. And he's going to sneak right back to the left. That's to take advantage of an over-pursuing defense. And look at 93. Look at Chris Combs. All the way down the field making the effort. They'll send the back in motion now on first down. And Gerard again just picking him apart. Another completed pass to his tight end, Rashawn Burns. Well, again, they lined him up out wide with that 4-6 speed. Try to get a physical mismatch from a strength standpoint. But Burns, again, another bright move. Staying in bounds. And as he goes off out of bounds now, Chris Combs is wondering what on earth he can do to stop Burns and stop this purple offense because they are getting on a roll. The Duke defense has been on the field for an awful long time here in the second half. Gerard, big pressure coming and got rid of it just in time. Darius Clark, a safety blitz, hit him from the blind side. Gerard never saw it coming, but Trevor looked like he felt it coming. Well, he felt it coming. Quarterbacks have a knack for that. He's going to come right here around the corner. And we just asked the question, how do you stop this purple offense? Do something new. They pulled the safety blitz out of the bottom of the hat, and it worked for him that time. Clark is an outstanding blitzer because he's got closing speed at the end and can make the play once he gets to the quarterback. Third down. Pirates have to get it to the 26-yard line for the first. Gerard with time and the open receiver, but unable to hang on to the football. Down inside the 15-yard line was Chapel. That's the second drop in a row from Chapel. Look at how hard this ball is thrown, though. This is the key. Gerard has actually sprained teammates' thumbs and fingers throwing the ball that hard in practice. 
And that's a ball that needs to be catched. But you know what? When you're a receiver, that thing looks about the size of a BB when it's a perfect spiral thrown on a straight laser rope like that. So now they will set it up. And this is going to be a field goal attempt at better than 50 yards for Miller. He has not had the kind of distance he's looking for on an attempt like this today. And it's blocked. The kick is blocked. Duke is going to take over just outside the 30-yard line. And Paul, that's a very good call on your part. The reason that ball got blocked, or Scott, I'm sorry, it got blocked because Miller has not had the distance, and so to get the distance, he kicks it low. Now look how low the trajectory of this football is as it comes. That's because the distance hasn't been there, and who's up in the air there? Looks like Nate Krill. Number 83, big 6'8", Nate Krill. Look how low the ball comes out, though. That's why that gets blocked. Nate Krill using all six foot eight. So now on first down, Duke will try to get something going. They go back to the ground, and Hill is caught from behind at the 35-yard line after a four-yard pickup on first down. Well, now they're 11 points down, so they're going to need a field goal and a touchdown with a two-point conversion. They've got nine minutes to go in this game. So there's no reason to panic. But I think from a game plan standpoint, Airborne needs to take over here. The Devils have been kept out of the end zone all day long. On second down. Romine with pressure, throws incomplete. Nobody was open and he took the shot from Devon Claybrooks. Once again, Romine's got to pick himself up from the turf. Well, airborne doesn't work if the cornerback is staring up into the clouds every play. This is another incredible hit. 91, Clay Brooks, is going to come on a stunt, untouched up the middle, and look at that. He hits him in the jaw with his forearms. And this poor guy right here, that's the cockroach in meeting rooms, Scott. When both hands up in the air, both feet up in the air, that's what we call it when we see it on film. That uh, took some guts on the part of Romine because he knew he would be a cockroach when he let go of that ball. Duke has to get to the 41 for the first down, and Carr is there to knock the ball loose. Carr forces the fumble, and East Carolina has recovered. Here's what the quarterback looks at when he sees all these people blitzing through. Romine's trying to look down the field, but Carr hits him in the back of the head. And look at the head snap again, Scott. And he drives him. That patented Jeff Carr drive the quarterback into the ground, hands and feet up in the air with the quarterback in the box. Now, here he comes. Take a look. Right up the middle. And watch him drive him into the ground. Drives him into the ground. And look where he ends up on his back. That is a patented car move right there. You know, you, you talk about counting pancakes for offensive linemen. You talk about counting sacks for defensive linemen. I think for Carr, you ought to count cockroaches, where how many guys he hits end up on their back with their hands and feet up in the air. Now, that's one of them coming off the field right now. Romine apparently is okay, but Carr forces the fumble. And now the ball at the 27-yard line. Three sacks. This season, good play in the backfield by Delamalure on first down as he stops Jamie Wilson. And right now, as Romine gets tended to, the clock a big problem for Duke trailing by 11. It is, and Romine's the guy that's that's got what semblance of rhythm there is in there. We don't know what they're working on there, but it looks like it might be a hand or something. They've got to put in backup Bobby Campbell if he's not able to go, and Campbell is cold on that sideline right now. Gerard takes some time to check off at the line of scrimmage. The option play again. Late pitch this time. And Wilson drives ahead. A flag on the play as he's herded out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Looks like there could be a hold coming. How calm can Garrard possibly be? We've seen him do the fake on the option 
take the ball in, tuck it, and turn up to run. This time, he fakes it on that option, Scott. And when the defense doesn't bite the fake, he waits for a second and then throws it back out. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, end of the run, repeat second down. And that's a terrible thing to have happen to such an outstanding personal play. Five turnovers today for the Blue Devils. Spencer Romine has got three interceptions, two fumbles, and you know what? I do not blame him because there was not an interception that he wasn't being hit in the ribs, and there was not a fumble where he should not have had help from his blockers. Second down once again. Gerard flips it out, but not a whole lot of room there this time to create for Bobby Weaver on his second catch of the day. Eric Jones. Eric Jones there to make the hit from the Duke secondary. And the Blue Devils trying to hold fast here with the ball outside their 35-yard line. Scott, you can see a different feel now coming over each sideline. East Carolina is starting to walk slowly as they go around with an air of confidence, an air that we've got this game under control physically and on the scoreboard. Duke, you can see him getting real antsy. They got to get it down to the 17 yard line for the first down as Gerard brings them up on third. Good throw down the middle, first down, yardage and more, and the tight end still on his feet. Rashawn Burns goes in from 35 yards away. We talked earlier in the game about how they wanted to get the tight ends loose up the middle. The tight ends will be the first or second choice on most of their drop back passes, and Garrard is taking a look to his right to see where the safety is, and when he sees them too far to the right, number 23, Jones, he knows that his tight end is going to be open for that touchdown. The extra point attempt is good. And suddenly, in the blink of an eye, East Carolina now up 27 to 9. Rashawn Burns, a 36 yard touchdown, the big East Carolina lead. A young quarterback reading the defense. He looks over here and sees nothing here. He knows his tight end is going to run there. So as he goes back to pass, he takes the read and throws the ball to Burns. Now, right there, this is Eric Jones. He is not in position. That was the read that Garrard made to choose the tight end to throw the ball to on that. And for a young sophomore, that's great sophistication in knowing this offense. Now, Garrard has said that the new defense that East Carolina is running has helped him because they rotate a lot. He plays against them in practice every day. The Buick scoring drive, just three plays, 27 yards. Now Montgomery from his own nine-yard line. Running in the run, and he gets it out to the 35-yard line. Lewis Johnson, how's the Duke quarterback? Scott, he's not too good. You know he took that nasty hit just a few plays ago on the right shoulder. He came off. Carl Franks had a talk with him. Trainers began to look at that shoulder. He's now standing on the sideline with ice on it. He has a sprained right shoulder, and the trainers have determined that he is done for the day. Well, he has been gritty and gutty all day long, taking the hits at quarterback. Ramine is now out, and Bobby Campbell, the junior from Hicksville, New York, has come in. Campbell throwing on the run on first down, has first down yardage out to Flowers. He's going to get as far as the 48-yard line. Bobby Campbell's a big guy. He's 6'5", 215, a lot bigger than Spencer Romine. As you look at his numbers, he's got a big, strong arm, and right now, Duke is going to need that because with six minutes and 46 seconds to go, they have got to throw this ball down the field, get yardage in big chunks. Campbell will work out of the gun this time on first down for the 48. Time to throw. Got his man, and the ball knocked away. Great play made by Forrest Foster, who closed to the ball inside the 25-yard line. That's what Deion Sanders does for the Dallas Cowboys, Scott. He's a cornerback that can match up with your best receiver and take him away. And every time they've thrown towards Foster, it has been an interception or it has been a knocked on pass like that, a pass breakup. 
Campbell brings him up on second down now. The rolling pocket, and he elects to throw it away with no one open to the left side of the field. You know he's looking for his go-to guys. Richmond Flowers and Scotty Montgomery. Today they have combined for 11 catches and 167 yards. But Duke has still not managed to get into the end zone. You know something, that is not a bad day for a pair of wide receivers. The problem is I think that Duke has tried for too long in this game to establish the run. They should have, in my opinion, backed away from that and gone to those two guys, Flowers and Montgomery, earlier. Third down and 10 yards to go for the Blue Devils. With time, the throw incomplete right through the hand of Kyle Shanahan, who tried to make the grab that would have been good for first down yardage inside the 40-yard line. Kyle Shanahan, the son of Denver Broncos head coach Mike Shanahan, did get a hand on the ball thrown by Campbell. And now with fourth down and trailing this game by 18 points, no choice for the Blue Devils but to go for it. You move the pocket here. You roll out. Got to get it to the 42 of the Pirates. Throw down field. Montgomery comes up with a first down catch. The juggling catch takes him inside the 25-yard line. 28 yards on the hookup. But a face mask call is going to go against Duke coming off a big play for the Blue Devils. Scott, this is something that we talked about earlier in that Duke, when they have had penalties, it has been at the worst possible moments after a long offensive game. Now this one's gonna hurt him. First up, uh, face mask on the offense, 15 yards, final foul, fourth down. Carl Franks with some frustration. Let's see if we can see where that face mask occurs. Look at the face right there of Carr. The face right there of Carr gets jerked back around by White. You know something, you, you, there, there comes a time when you need to take a, a hold or a penalty to protect your quarterback, but not on fourth down or third down like that. Looked like Wes White was the guy who's hit for the penalty. And now Brian Morton gets away another boomer. That's his nickname. And he sends East Carolina back to their own 26 yard line to begin the drive. Tuesday at 8 on Fox Sportsnet. He was the NFL Comeback Player of the Year in 97, first team All Pro in 95. He invented and perfected the Lambeau Leap. Robert Brooks, the guest on Hardcore Football, Tuesday night at 8 on Fox Sportsnet. Seven seasons with the Packers, 32 touchdowns. Announced his retirement earlier this summer. Under six minutes left to play, and Gerard running the option again. Takes a shot Could after a gain of about a yard. You can hear. Listen to the words, pull the ball out, pull the ball out. You can hear the defense of Duke. Now listen, I want to say hit him. Pull the ball out, listen to this. Pull the ball out, pull the ball out. And look, <laughs> that, uh, that hurts. Now that's what they need to do, create the turnover here by whatever way they can as time's getting short. Gerard try to avoid the pressure of Combs. Just about out of real estate, and he elects to step out of bounds with a little bit of an assist from Mike Steinbaugh. That's frustration on Steinbaugh's part. Think things have just not gone their way in this second half. Now here comes number 93 on the left of your screen. The problem is the quarterback Gerard can change direction faster than he can. So that makes you look bad. And that's not really fair to Combs out there because he's he's being asked to chase a guy that you know he's not quick enough or agile enough to actually track down. Makes him look bad. But he has had look at his jersey. See how dirty it is. He has had just an awesome performance today, Combs has. Third down and one now. And Gerard 
Avoids the pressure once again. Got some time now and got that big arm. Can he get it downfield? The leap and the incomplete pass as Eric Jones got back in time to knock it away from Arnie Powell. That was 60 yards in the air on his back foot. Look at Chris Combs' jersey. Look at all that. You don't even wash that jersey. You take it out back and you burn it and buy him a new one. And that's the badge of courage of a man who has been all over the field and will do what Vince Lombardi said about the man in the arena, that the man in the arena at the end of a victory expended, spent on the field. That's the greatest feeling you can have. But if they don't have the victory, it's very hollow. Looking increasingly like he's not going to have that victory today. A big rush, but they don't get at the punt. Ertel Jack going to try it from his 26-yard line. And he has heard it out of bounds, out at the 40. 4.53 left to go in this one. Our national car rental game summary now. Gerard with 263 passing yards and a couple of scores. Spencer Romine. Chased around all day, forced into five turnovers. And there you see Duke outscored by 17 points in the second half of this game. Out rushed 143 to negative eight yards. That's domination at the line. Campbell looking downfield. Flowers beat his man and makes the catch. He had to come back for the ball. Flowers got behind Eric Hines down the left sideline, and he is down to the East Carolina 29-yard line. And that's what Campbell brings to it. He's got that big, strong arm with all that height and strength. He threw that ball off his back foot in the face of a blitz. Still got it down where it could be caught. 32-yard pickup on first down for the Blue Devils, who have to hurry now. With under five minutes left. Campbell again. On the swing pass, that's Hill. And he's taken down by Anthony Adams, the red shirt freshman safety, before he could get up ahead of steam. There's a reason there's a distinction on the back of his jersey for Anthony Adams, because his twin brother, Antoine Adams, is also in that defensive backfield as a backup. And they both walked on, and they've both merited scholarships. On second down. Campbell finds Hill. And Hill is down to the 27-yard line. And Carr hits Campbell. Well, at least he's not discriminating about who he goes after. No, he'll go after anybody in a white jersey. As long as he's got the football, he's in trouble. Third down now. They've got to get it to the 19. Campbell with all day and throws it away with no one to throw to. Now, well, the Duke Blue Devils start out 0-1 here today. It's not going to get a whole lot easier for them as they move into the month of October. Number one, Florida State. Number 22, Virginia. Number 10, Georgia Tech. And number three, 23, North Carolina State. All on the horizon just in the month of October alone. Well, this kind of offense does take some games to get the synchronization down. But I think, you know, from a PR standpoint, they call it airborne rather than air ball because if they start slowly, the press might be mean and call it hairball. You don't want that. So it's airborne. On fourth down, Campbell with the big blitz coming. Got Flowers, but can't get the football there. And he was buried by the blitzing linebacker, Williamson. East Carolina is going to take over on downs with 3.38 left to go. Sunday night at night on Fox Sports Net. Sammy Sosa goes ready to make some more waves. Number eight, Miami, later on this month. The big conference game against Southern Miss. And then the big visit late in the season from a team ranked number 23 right now, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Steve Logan talks about winning against brand name programs, and so far he's doing it. And that'll make his program a brand name program as he continues to do that. On first down. The give this time is to Henry. And he's going to have another first down into Duke territory. 
The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game was produced by Tom Hewitt and directed by Ned Tate. The College Football Saturday studio show was produced by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Waters. Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Jenkins. East Carolina big. Under two and a half left. On the give. A turn of the quarter and another East Carolina first down. Chris Sean Gilliam making his first carry of the ball game and making it count as he gets down to the Duke 39 yard line. An impressive beginning for Steve Logan. A win against a Big East program and now a win today against an ACC program. Gerard controlled passing game and gets it to the tight end again. Rashad Burns was inside the 35 yard line. And with beating teams against those two conferences has been something they've been doing for years. This program at East Carolina has put players into the pros. They've had a lot of guys that have been on watch list for Outland Trophy, Butkus Award, all those different things. They've got good personnel, good continuity with Steve Logan, and now they're getting the exposure here that they really deserve. On second down. And once again, the Give is straight ahead. Not a whole lot this time for Gilliam. Back to the 37-yard line as the clock now will wind under a minute left to play. Steve Logan talked about in 1996 after a pair of bowl appearances, the disappointment of not being a bowl team despite a winning record. Well, so far, he's off to a good start this year and trying to make it back to that bowl season. Once again, it is Gilliam down inside the 35-yard line. And a standing ovation now for East Carolina. Pirate fans enjoying a big victory 